So this one, not so bad. We know this guy has a zero at one plus i root three. So by definition, that should make this guy equal zero. So we're just gonna put in uh, one plus i root three for the x, cube it, add c, and that should equal zero. And then we can just figure out what c is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this whole thing out. Uh, if you, you can use your binomial theorem on it if you want. I mean, you have to know it for this test anyway, so you could practice with that. But if you forget it or just want to do it uh, the old-fashioned way, we can just multiply this guy out. So when I FOIL these, I'll get uh, 1 plus i root 3 plus another i root 3 is plus 2 i root 3. And then uh, plus i squared root 3 times root 3 is just 3. I'll leave this guy b, and I'll just, uh, uh, i squared is negative 1, so i squared times 3 is negative 3. So 1 minus 3 is minus 2, and then plus 2i root 3 plus c equals 0. Keep foiling. Uh, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and then plus 2i root 3, and then minus 2i root 3, and then plus 2i squared times 3. And so this will be um, i squared is negative 1, so 2 times 3 is 6, so this whole term is negative 6. So we have negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. Those terms go away plus c will equal 0, so c is 8. So our function should be uh, x cubed plus 8. Check. And so now we just want to sketch the graph and label the intercepts. So if we want an x-intercept, we're going to let the y equal 0. So uh, 0 will equal x cubed plus 8. So x cubed will be negative 8. So x will be the cube root of negative 8, which will be negative 2. And this gives us the real one that's on our graph. We already know that the imaginary ones are 1 plus i root 3 and 1 minus i root 3, but we don't really care to graph it. So now we're just going to, oh, and then I can get a y-intercept 2. And that just happens when the x is 0. So when the x is 0, the y will be 0 cubed plus 8. So that will be 8. So I'll make a y-intercept of 8. Plot that. Make an x-intercept of negative 2. Plot that. And I can recognize the graph is just a cubic function shifted up 8. So I know it's kind of that noodle, John Travolta looking graph. Uh, there, shift it up 8. So this is where it starts. It just kind of goes like that. Nice little sketch of the graph. And that's all there is to that. Uh, if you look at the answers that they give on the CSET website, um, the four-point response answer does this long and convoluted way of solving it. Uh, and they, but they come, and then the three-point response answer I like better. They did it the same way we did. Um, they just didn't write any sentences in there, so if you just do a quick sentence at the at the beginning that says uh, since x plus one plus i root three is a zero, then it uh, by definition it should make f of x equal zero, and just put a little bit of just like one sentence or two between the words. I think that works beautifully. I don't know why they did it all crazy convoluted in the four point answer. So I think all the three point answer was missing was just a tiny bit of explanation a tiny bit of explanation for their intercepts, so just little bits. That's that.